real good flame on it. See heat rising out of it. It's yeah. the, it, we're good.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, friends one and all, today the Diocese of Wichita gathers in the hope of the resurrection to celebrate the sacred mysteries for the repose of the soul of Bishop Emeritus Eugene Gerber. In the name of the whole diocese, I wish to thank his brother and sisters, his nieces and nephews, and his entire family for sharing your brother, uncle, and friend with all of us. We pledge to you and to all who will mourn his death the promise of our prayers and our thoughts. Our diocese is deeply touched by the presence of so many bishops, bishops from Kansas and Region 9 of our Episcopal Conference, and in particular, the bishops who came from this diocese. Of all the priests from the Dodge City and the Wichita Diocese and other locations, deacons, seminarians, consecrated religious, all whom he loved very much, as well as the countless numbers of people who felt his love in their life. As we are now called to share and hear the word of truth and to celebrate and receive the bread of life, may Bishop Gerber's soul rise like the incense of our prayer to the mercy of God's throne. Let us now pause to consider our own sins as a way to purify ourselves in order to celebrate more worthily these most sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Eugene Gerber, to whom you committed the care of your family, may with the manifold fruits of his labors enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will not remove. He will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Oscuras, nada temo, porque tú estás conmigo. Tu barra y tu callado me dan seguridad. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing in deep shall I You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. My shepherd is a Y tu misericordia me acompañarán todos los días de mi vida y viviré en la casa del Señor por años sin término. My shepherd is the Lord, nothing in shall I
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain, for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. But by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, 
to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be Jesus Christ. I have heard it said that people will not always remember what you say to them, but they will always remember how you made them feel. If this is true, and I believe it is to be true, then I submit, brothers and sisters, that we have hit upon one of the keys to understanding the life and the ministry of the man whose body we honor today with Christian burial and for whom we give God our most profound thanks, Bishop Emeritus Eugene Gerber, the eighth bishop of the Diocese of Wichita. For I am certain that each of us has had at least one experience, a meeting, an encounter, a moment with Bishop Gerber when he made us feel as though we were the only one. He was so focused on us at that moment and related to us as if we were his very best of friends. That's how I understand and imagine the ministry of Jesus Christ. As he walked so many centuries ago on the dusty roads of Palestine, encountering the many and varied peoples he did as related to us in the Gospels, moments of encounter frozen, if you will, in time and, e and in eternity, where each person who met the, the gaze of our Lord felt important, unique, special, and loved. Bishop Eugene Gerber had that unique and life-changing ability. I personally recall such feelings from each and every time our paths crossed even if for only a few short moments. As a new bishop, eager to discover this new family entrusted to my pastoral care, I cherish and relish those happy meetings when I could take the time to ask of him some advice and to receive the blessing of his experience and wisdom. Bishop Gerber never came to those moments without his characteristically infectious smile, which lit up his face as our eyes met and as our greetings were exchanged. As he extended his, his hand, I like to call it the farmer's hand, big and, and in, engaging and wrapping it around your complete hand. And his usual, almost usual expression it's so good to see you. For him, 
this was a moment of great importance and he never left you feeling otherwise. I shall be forever grateful to have been given the privilege of coming to know him in these past four years and indeed and truthfully to love him as a brother bishop and to witness firsthand with all of you the profound impact he has had on the church and in particular on our diocese. Slightly more than two weeks ago, unbeknownst to me, I would have the last such encounter with Bishop Gerber just before leaving for our annual diocesan pilgrimage this year to Greece and Ephesus, retracing the footsteps of the Apostle St. Paul. In that moment, as he and I sat together at table for lunch at the Priest Retirement Center, speaking of various things, and when the other priests at the table had left to go on to their afternoon naps, <laughs> I took the occasion to ask about his health, which, as you all know, he was very private about and very reticent to share or talk about, but which I and all of us knew to be increasingly deteriorating. He sort of looked down and paused for a moment, and then he looked up at me and looked into my eyes. And he said, Carl, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever God wants of me and whenever he wants it. I have only gratitude. After our conversation ended, as I walked back to my home, not knowing, of course, those would be the last words he would speak to me in this life, I felt a deep sense of blessing. To come to the end of one's long life, and yet challenging life, and challenging ministry, to have weathered the many storms of life and service in the church in the last two decades of the 20th century, such as Bishop Gerber did, and did it heroically and gracefully. So much of it hidden from the view of his family and his priests and his many friends. To come to the end of all of that with a sense of a deep and abiding peace about it all and gratitude for it all is no small gift. Gratitude. He lived a grateful life. How important that virtue is for us today, for it is the essence of stewardship, which will always bear Bishop Gerber's imprint in this diocese, in this local church. He knew, and more importantly, lived stewardship as we define it, as a grateful response of a Christian disciple who recognizes God's gifts and shares these gifts in love of God and neighbor. Bishop Gerber was undeniably a true Christian steward to the very end, having only gratitude to take with him into the kingdom of heaven. Friends, it is my deepest honor to be one of his successors to lead us today as such in grateful prayer and humble praise for the unique and altogether amazing gift of a man who in the span of 87 years was a devoted son, a supporting and loving brother, uncle and great uncle, but also by this vocation in the church, a faithful and servant priest and pastor, and finally, a pastoral and deeply caring bishop. In all of this, he was the consummate Christian disciple. We thank God for Bishop Gerber's life and ministry as we entrust his noble soul to our eternal Father and as we reverently bury his body, the temple of the triune God, 
in the ground of this world he loves so much. There, in that sacred place, it will wait in hope for the resurrection to a new life, in that new heaven and that new earth promised and bequeathed to us by God's Son. May our prayer and praise deepen our own grateful response to God's abundant blessings as we strive to model our own stewardship after his, so that we too will share the glory that we believe to be his now and for all eternity. Interestingly, I learned that Bishop Gerber had died at the moment our pilgrimage was visiting the Greek island of Patmos, where the Apostle John was exiled in the last years of his long apostolic ministry. Father David Lees, our Vicar General, texted me of the news at that exact moment our group was entering the grotto or the cave where tradition tells us St. John received the revelations as contained in the last book of the Bible by the same name, from which we have heard today in the second reading. The priests who were on tour with us and I as we shared this moment, we all recalled the words, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For Eugene Gerber, it was Jesus Christ who was all things to him. From the beginning of his life, throughout his whole life, and to the very end. Jesus Christ was the underpinning and foundation of his human, priestly, and Episcopal life. So we need not wonder then about the source of the fruitful ministry that was his among us. It was born day after day from that intimate relationship he possessed with Jesus, the Son of Man, his Lord and Savior and our own. That relationship, so important for the life of a Christian disciple, he attended to and developed as a faithful friend by daily prayer, humble service, and ardent faith. He knew himself to be that fruit-bearing branch grafted to the vine of Christ, which Christ pruned and made ever more fruitful with the passing of time, the fruit that we enjoy today. These fruits are the many realities in our diocese that owe their existence in large measure to Bishop Gerber's pastoral vision and deeply caring heart. We know these realities well, and it is hard for us to imagine our diocesan life without them. But dare we, we dare not ever take them for granted. Among them, stewardship as a way of life, not a program, but a relationship with Jesus Christ founded in gratitude. Bishop Gerber once wrote that he did not find stewardship it found him, and it changed his entire vision and way of living. But his baby, if you will, he admits, was the Lord's diner, where and through which each day thousands are given the blessing of a hot meal with dignity and honor just across the street from our beloved Mother Church. I personally will long remember the pride with which he spoke of his vision and plans for the Lord's Diner to my family and the many guests who gathered just a little over four years ago for my ordination here and to have lunch together in that special place. He won over the hearts of so many in my family and Honestly, so many who were planning to give me a gift of money wrote a check to the Lord's Diner as a result of that. And I was happy they did so. We think of the Spiritual Life Center where he lived very closely, a place of formation in the faith and in growth of the spiritual life. The Catholic Care Center, where as he said, we cannot care for everyone but we can show how everyone should be cared for. 
He once said that he thought the source of stewardship grace in this diocese was adoration of the most blessed sacrament. How true that surely is. His encouragement and promotion of adoration chapels and adoration times in our parishes and other institutions has truly changed the landscape of our diocese in a powerful way as thousands week after week come before the Lord in his presence to adore, to praise, and to thank. We know that Bishop Gerber was instrumental in the merger of two beloved Catholic hospitals in our city into what we now know today as Via Christi or Ascension Via Christi, the way of Christ. Likewise, he had a great love and encouragement for Guadalupe Clinic, which offers health care to the uninsured and the working poor. Such things had a claim on his heart, such as Harvest House Ministries serving our seniors, St. Anthony Family Shelter offering emergency shelter for homeless families, Harbor House Ministries for those who suffer from domestic violence and abuse, adult day services, and so many other ministries of our Catholic charities that were near and dear to his caring heart. We know he worked extensively to strengthen and solidify our partnership with Newman University, which now offers advanced degrees in theology and pastoral ministry, where our men are now being formed in the early years at the St. Joseph House of Formation, and of course, most recently, his essential support for the new Gerber Science Center, a state-of-the-art facility for those being trained in the ever-expanding fields of science and health-related entities. Finally, he loved his priests and our seminarians. Each time he would make an appearance at our annual clergy convocation, he was like a lit Christmas tree sitting out there in the lobby. And all the priests would come one by one or in pairs to pay their respects, to share a moment or two with him. And his smile never left his face. How much he loved our priests. He set the bar pretty high for seminary and recruitment and formation. But it resulted, it has resulted today in a larger than usual presbyterate a presbyterate that, whose fraternal unity is so very evident to me. I ask him from heaven now to continue to bless us with intercession, to call many more young men to discern a vocation to the priesthood in our diocese. But friends, these fruits of Bishop Gerber's life and ministry, among others, over these many years was never, ever about him. And he would be the first to remind us of this important truth. These realities exist today to glorify God and not us. Cursed will we be if we ever forget this. Bishop Gerber would not allow himself ever to be glorified by any of these so-called accomplishments. And neither should we. For now it is up to us, all of us, working together, side by side, to further these good works and many others, and to infuse them with the sustaining power of our faith, so that we who have received these blessings will become, as he did, fully alive as a missionary disciple of Jesus Christ. We thank God then today for this faithful son of the church, this successor of the apostles, who like those first apostles called from the Sea of Galilee to be fishers of men, in spite of their weaknesses and shortcomings, were entrusted with the care of many souls and to be a strong witness of the risen Christ in our world. Bishop Gerber's ministry as such is complete he has finished the race, fought the good fight, 
and gain the prize of eternal life. For Bishop Gerber, the promises of Isaiah, the prophet, have been fulfill, fulfilled. The veil that Isaiah spoke of that darkened his vision has been lifted. The web that naturally entangled his human freedom and ours, his web has been removed and death has been destroyed. Now for him and for all the dead, as Revelation tells us, tears have been wiped away and the reproach and the consequences of Adam's sin have been removed. He, Bishop Gerber, and those who have gone before him and us are either already on God's holy mountain of glory or they see it from the abode of merciful purification with a clarity of vision none of us can fully comprehend until it is our time to join them let us not fail to remember to pray for all the dead and especially for Bishop Gerber. He would ask nothing more of us and from us to pray and to remember him as he so often prayed for and remembered us. And we do this out of gratitude for how he made us feel. Always important always unique, always chosen, and always loved. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Please join me in the response. Hear our prayer. In baptism, Eugene received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the dark lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our brother Eugene was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our brother Eugene shared in the priesthood of Jesus Christ, leading God's people in prayers and worship. Bring him into your presence where he will take the place in the heavenly liturgy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The family and friends of Eugene seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain, dispel their darkness, and doubt that comes from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Eugene. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people 
whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all his holy church. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant and Bishop Eugene Gerber, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these holy, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and to all those who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. 
we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servant, Bishop Eugene Gerber, who has gone before us with the sign of faith and rest <laughs> in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Eugene Gerber, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final commendation, I would just like to take a moment to offer a word of thanks. There's so many to thank uh, each and every one of you for being here and for those who came last evening and throughout the night to pay honor and respects to Bishop Gerber. But I'd be remiss if we didn't thank our cathedral choir and Vietnamese choir and all our music ministers for helping us pray so beautifully this morning. For all of those who have been working behind the scenes throughout this past week and uh, offering us the hospitality that we have and will enjoy, especially the cathedral staff and our chancery staff and all those who have helped in any way to plan this liturgy. Thanks to our bishops for attending this funeral mass and to all of our priests for being here in such great numbers. Thanks one and all for the prayer of praise and thanksgiving that we have offered together for our beloved Bishop Eugene Gerber. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our deep affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Bishop Gerber again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother, Bishop Eugene Gerber, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Bishop in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. 
Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, we now entrust our brother, Bishop Eugene Gerber, to the intercession and in the loving presence of our Blessed Mother as we sing together the Salve Regina. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulce Do, et spes nostra salve. A te clamamus, exules filie ve, a te suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in hoc lacrimarum vale. Everyone is invited to Good Shepherd's Hall immediately after the Mass for a reception, and the burial will take place at Ascension Cemetery at 2.30. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> 